proved to be 99%, that would be a strong indication that it was alien or, or half alien, mm. probably part alien. If it was 98%, let's say, then that would be a clear indication it was well away from human. 97% would make it equal with chimp. 95 would make it equal with gorilla. So we were, we were hoping, I was anticipating, that we would move out to the level of chimp and gorilla simply because the physiology of the star child, its physical structure, mm. is as different from human as is the physical structure of a chimp or a gorilla in their own ways. Mm. So I was always very confident that we were going to win this thing, but it was just a question of when and how we would get the opportunity to, to do it. A couple of months ago, out of the blue, a very highly qualified geneticist contacted me he said he had his actually his wife had heard about it told him about it and he he's a very courageous man and he said you know I, I'd really like to know what this is I think that with the new techniques that are available I don't have access to the 454 technology that would allow for the full recovery of all of your genome but what I can provide for you is what's called a shotgunning technique and if you give me a sample, I can tell you if your nuclear DNA is in there. Mm -hmm. Because from where it was in 2003, now we can take much smaller samples. We can take samples of 200, 300, 400 base pairs long instead of the many hundreds or, or low thousands that, were, that you had to have in 2003. And he says if, if, your, if your sample is really unusual and if there is you know, something very unique about it, the smaller pieces should be able to tell us something. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely, I would love to have this kind of information, even if it means the whole thing's over with and, and there is no recovery of the nuclear DNA, I believe there will be. He said, well, I'll, I'll be, should be able to tell you. So, so we gave him, go ahead. Uh, so, so he did it out of uh, curiosity primarily? Out he of, wanted to know as uh, well? Out of curiosity and just the, the true scientific spirit. Yeah. I mean, that's basically it. The true scientific spirit can be found in about 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 of actual real scientists. The rest of them are just basically cowards who don't want to uh, risk the, the letting their peers know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I have to say this. Our guy is the same way in that he said, you can't announce who I am or where I work or anything like that because I would lose my job immediately mm -hmm. if they knew that I was working on this in my spare time. But he says, if we, if we get an answer that's a really robust and solid and provable answer, then, of course, we, we can come forward because, you know, it'll be making history. It'll be a big deal and all that. So I said, okay, you, you've got my word on that. So he went to work. We gave him a sample, and he went to work on it. And about three weeks later, Henrik, this was so cool, I got an email from him, and this is what it said. Hang on, Dorothy. We're not in Kansas anymore. And you know, remember from the Wizard of Oz, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like he had been swept up in a tornado. And he said, here's, here's what we have. He says, I have now recovered several samples in the 200 to 500 base pair range. Your nuclear DNA is here. It is clearly here. Mm. But, he says, when I ran it through the National Institute of Health, the NIH database, I got some very unusual results. Now, let me explain what the NIH database is. Mm -hmm. Here in the States, we have a government institution called the National Institute of Health, the NIH. And what they do is they provide the money to many, many, many scientists in the country who are working on recovering genomes of different species. Now that they have the 454 machines and the technology to do it, those machines are running night and day, recovering the genomes of every kind of species you can think of. So anytime public money is used, those genomes become public. And so they are put into the NIH database, which now contains billions and billions, if not trillions, of base pair chains from all these species. Now, we're talking about from viruses to bacteria, to moles, to fungus, mm -hmm. to crustaceans, to mollusks, to fish, to, to, to primates, right on up. Everything is in there, 120 plus. Now, that's not every species on Earth, but it's samples of pretty much every species type. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so he ran those those base pairs through the database, and he found that several of them found corollaries in human DNA on, in fact, it can even narrow it down to the, a, a certain segment of the first chromosome of, of humans. So clearly part of the, the star child's nuclear DNA is human. But to his great surprise, and to, to ours and everybody else's, some of the other parts, 300, 400 base pairs long, they were not just non-human, Henry. They, they were not just non-human. They are not, not found on Earth. Okay. Not anywhere in the NIH database. Mm. So that means this DNA that the star child carries, a good portion of it, is something that's never been seen on this planet before. Hmm. Now that guarantees you, it guarantees you that the star child is indeed a human alien hybrid. And it opens up an incredible, incredible vista of challenge for how to figure out what this thing is and what it, you know, what it might mean to, to, to all of us, you know, it's just, it's so exciting it, it, and we just don't even hardly know where to begin to imagine where this kind of, of information is going to lead. <laughs> so we're, we're just, you know, we're pretty much flabbergasted, but we're sharing the word as we can within the alternative community. We're not putting it out onto the mainstream yet. We're not standing up in front of a press conference in front of the world because the geneticist has to repeat what he's done several times so that and, and get you know longer chains and do a number of other things he has to approach it yeah. from a, a variety of ways to make sure that critics aren't going to do like they did in 203 now let's go back to 203 and imagine here we have a a recovery of mitochondrial dna a fresh obvious on the first attempt first attempt to recover bright and clear in the gel sheets obvious to anyone that this is not degraded DNA. This is good quality DNA. Understand now, remember, they're getting DNA out of fossils of Neanderthals and other creatures 30,000 years old and beyond. Mm. They're pulling nuclear DNA chips and pieces out of that. So it was clear in 2003 that we had good quality DNA. And in six attempts, we couldn't recover hmm. the nuclear DNA. That meant for sure that the father was the problem and the father was not human or it would have recovered. Hmm. So science would not accept that. They took the easy answer for them. You know, if they were scientists, if they were real true scientists, they would say, hey, wow, we're going to really look into this and try to find out what this is. Yeah. But no. This is not an answer science wants. This is not something science wants to deal with. This is something that's going to have to be crammed down its throat unwillingly at first. Mm. But once they're free to explore the possibilities here, once it's established firmly, then they will be in line begging for pieces of the sample to work with. You know how it's going to work. But for, until we can get to that tipping point, where they're forced to acknowledge alien existence, which they don't want to to deal with if, until they have to, uh, we're we're just stuck. So he has to be very careful. Our geneticist does to make sure he's got everything lined up so that he can defend it against the assault of those among the scientific community who are going to be dedicated to preserving the status quo as it is. So mm -hmm. we know that we're in for a dogfight, mm -hmm. and we know that that. Uh, he, he has to be very, very careful about the time that he's able to, to stand on that stage and, and hold, you know, deal with the criticism that's going to come. Now, that could be six weeks from now, a couple months from now. We're not really sure. He's working on it as we speak, but because he has to use, he can use only the shotgun technique because he doesn't have access to a 454 machine. He has, it's going to go very slowly, unfortunately. Now, we're in the process, I am in the process, I am in the process of now trying to find investors who will now put the money into this because we know we're gonna, we know we're gonna have success. So that's what we're doing. Now, it's not just the scientific testing alone anymore. It's the recovery.